Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Do uh, keep up with uh, all these things from week to week on tarpley.net and get yourself a copy of Surviving the Cataclysm uh, so you can uh, make sense out of what's going on. Now, therefore, the German, to wrap up the discussion on the German ban, the German ban on naked credit default swaps was uh, the right thing to do, uh, doesn't go far enough, but it's an important step in the right direction. It is a landmark in the sense that it's the first major government move by a major government in a very long time to strike at this complex of hedge funds, derivatives, zombie banks that have been uh, destroying the world economy. And it's therefore the necessary self-defense of the nation state against these neo-feudal predators uh, and the assertion of a public interest against the sociopaths of the Soros, uh, Einhorn, uh, Paulson, and so forth variety. Again, the, the hedge fund hyenas were on parade in Las Vegas this week for their convention, appropriately enough, in the capital of gambling, because that's what they do. That's what derivatives are. They're bets. They're wagers. They should be illegal under the gambling laws. Illegal under the gambling laws, in, illegal under the insurance laws, but not uh, enforced. So... Um, the German government ban is working. <laughs> the euro is up uh, consistently now over the three or four days, depending on how you want to count, since they imposed the ban, it's going up. They, again, that's the main thing is not going up, but the main thing is stabilization to stop, to stymie the planned panic run on the euro that seemed to have been in the works for the middle of the week. That would have been the reason for the emergency German action. You can't wait for the ponderous Eurogarchs and Eurocrats and Bilderberger agents like Barroso and Van Rompuy to come together and, uh, and uh, join you, because they never will. Right? Barroso will have his proposal in October. See you in October, says, uh, says uh, Barroso. By that time, the second phase of the Depression will be over and we'll be on into the third phase of the world economic depression. So um, that's all to the good. Now, remember, as of two weeks ago, we're in a systemic crisis. Trichet of the European Central Bank said this is a systemic crisis. Only Rehn, R-E-H-N, Eurogark, uh, also in order to get the trillion imposed, says this is a systemic crisis. It is a systemic crisis. The problem with the trillion, of course, is the trillion is not the way to go. It's much cheaper, much more efficient, and it's politically easier to impose these bans. Ban credit default swaps. Ban most kinds of derivatives, if you can. Sarkozy could do this. He's got the, the emergency powers that some of these other governments may not have. Uh, ban hedge funds means regulate them. Once they're thoroughly regulated, they're not hedge funds anymore. So... Um, that's what has to happen uh, in, in just about – and, of course, Sarkozy and the Euro wimps are uh, looking pathetic, and uh, they're cutting a sorry figure this morning uh, because of their failure to go along with this. Now, therefore, uh, the Euro short squeeze by the, by the central banks, it's possible, not proven. Uh, if they've done it, good. If they haven't done it, they should do it. And if it's not going on, it's just another tribute to the efficacy of the, uh, of the German ban in spreading fear in the ranks of the hedge funds. Now, how is this playing out today? Uh, on Friday, essentially, you, uh, the uh, crisis goes on. Japan was down 2.5% overnight. Singapore down 2%. Asia, in general, down 2 to 3%. Uh, Europe down less. Europe down about uh, one half of one percent, but of course here in, in the U.S. on uh, Thursday, the 30th, you had the uh, big uh, market break, 375 points down. Uh, this morning, Friday, by the way, the Dow was down 150 points at the opening. It went all the way down to 99.18, and then of course the plunge protection team, PPT, President's Working Group on Financial Markets, came in with futures buying, i.e. derivatives. And, uh, and got it, they've got it back up again. Now, whether they can hold it through the afternoon is anybody's guess, but they're, they're now congratulating themselves, of course, that the panic is over. In the background, absolutely critical, the interbank lending system, the so-called interbank plumbing, 
uh, measured by LIBOR, London Interbank Overnight Rate, the lending of banks among themselves on the open, deregulated London market. This is going up, of course, and this indicates the growing world panic. At the moment when the European interbank plumbing breaks down, that is the moment when uh, world depression is at hand. Now, that had already happened two weeks ago. Uh, two weeks ago, we had the flash crash, the minus 1,000 points in 20 minutes on Wall Street. And uh, the day after that, on that Friday, it was clear that the European interbank plumbing system was, uh, was in bad shape. One of these hedge fund guys on CNBC has said, the rivets are popping. You can hear the rivets popping as the submarine goes deeper and deeper. And the question is, will it be crushed uh, or, or not? So uh, the crisis remains on. It's, it's therefore imperative. National governments have got to strike back against speculation. Concerning Greece, right, the Greeks had a, uh, a another general strike this week. The fourth general strike on Thursday. Right, this was uh, on, the, on May 19th. The Greeks got their money from the, uh, from the bailout from the IMF, and they were able to pay about 10 or 15 billion dollars that they owed to their bondholders. But now we've got to look critically at the leadership of this Greek strike process, right? The four general strikes in Greece, uh, normally in a country like Greece, a good, well-organized general strike, which these have been, right? They've been effective in their own terms of shutting down the country. But that's not the goal. What's the point of shutting down the country? You want to bring down the government, bring down the, the, uh, the Eurogark and uh, an austerity fiend, Papandreou, down with Papandreou is the demand, right? Epanastasi um, uh, against Papandreou. So uh, they haven't been able to do this. Now, why is it? It's because the, the ouster of Papandreou is not one of the demands. If you look at the uh, demands of these uh, general strikes, they are very, very narrow. They're very much in a kind of um, minimalist trade union language, essentially the, the main demand on Thursday of this week for the general strike was that the public insurance system should remain public and should remain social. In other words, that it not be privatized. And that's fine, but you've got to get off of the defensive alone and get into the offensive. And the offensive means down with Papandreou, no confidence in this PASOK government, and then... Attack the speculators, the hedge funds, the derivatives, tax the bank, Tobin tax, 1%, and so forth to suppress speculation and provide revenue to pay for this stuff. Otherwise, you just sit there, let the oligarchs attack you, and it's a loser. We'll be back in a minute on World Crisis Radio.